And next up, we have projectile motion. Projectile motion is basically same as your free fall question, but in 2D. So not only are you moving up and down, you're also moving sideways at the same time. While this is a common enough occurrence to have things flying through the air, say the golf ball in this question, and it'd be nice to predict where things land, doing these kind of projectile motion problem also gets you used to thinking in multiple dimension, tracking your X and Y components, and knowing what to sub in at different spots, and not to get mixed up with all the more and more variables we're asking you to deal with. So it's going to be good practice leading into more complicated problems and being able to deal with them. And of course, once we have more and more variables and numbers to work with, good presentation is going to become more and more important so that you know which exactly number are you subbing into where. So let's start by making a quick sketch of the problem. So we're talking about that there's some green spot. If you don't know golf, the green is just a patch of different type of grass near where you try to get it in in the hole. But somehow 70 meters behind that and also 20 meters above that is where the person is hitting the ball. Because the green sits below the fairway where the person is hitting. Here you have the person who hits. Not the best drawing ever, but you know. Hits with a certain initial velocity and a direction. And as the ball flies through the air, it's going to go through projectile motion and go up and then eventually come down. And we're going to be so far away. That's what we're asked for. Before we get much further, go set the coordinate system. Let's let's set the initial y equals 0 and x equals 0 at the starting point just to make things easier and so I just put my pause of x and y that way. With that we can start defining some stuff. My position of vector to start with is going to be 0i plus 0j and here I'm going to be again using my i and j notation. My rf, well we know that we would have dropped down 20 meters in the vertical direction, but we don't know how far we moved horizontally. Not the 70, we don't quite make it, right? They're asking how close we are. We're trying to find out exactly where this xf is, and then we subtract that from 70. That is our actual answer. My original v, well, we have 20 meters per second, and then go 40 like that, so we can say and decompose into my i hat and j hat using sine and cosine. Both positive because you're going forward and upwards. Your acceleration, well your acceleration is g. So in this case it will be, just to make it explicit, you don't even have to write this in the future. There's no acceleration in the horizontal direction and you have negative 9.81 meters per second square in the vertical direction. So we want to find xf but we don't know anything about the final velocity and we don't know the time. So chances are we will need to look at one of the components to find out my time and then working back to get my xf. So this we're making use of this kinematics equation here. And we're going to start by just looking at the, all the things with j hat in it because we know very well that your i hat and j hat doesn't mix. Very similar to when we did x and y separately. What this allows us to do is it allows us to solve for the time. But before we can get there, we notice again that we have delta t and delta t square. Have to use the quadratic formula. But before we can do that, we gotta make sure the whole thing equals zero. So we gotta shift this over, plus blah 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 blah, blah which we're gonna keep. So this is my c, b, and a. And then in case you still don't have it handy, we're just going to put that down here like that. Subbing all the numbers in. Again, this is telling us that we have a positive answer and a fictitious, in this case, negative answer. So this is the one we want. 
now that we have that time we can look at the same formula but with all the i hat components so we have and now that we have delta t to sub in but that's not our actual answer right that's just how far we get from where we hit but how close are we to the green so we have to find 70 minus your xf so to put it all pretty she comes as close as 30 meters to the green so hopefully this shows you how in these 2d kinematics cases we can list everything out with ij and maybe k and then we can deal with the i hats and the j hats kind of separately